Indy Mogul. Yes, I'm sick, but that doesn't stop movie math. Here are today's headlines. Disney debuts a new kind of fairy tale with Tangled. The Muppets pick a return date to the silver screen. Angelina Jolie is set to walk like an Egyptian. And of course, the weekend box office. Now let's get started. This weekend, Disney debuted the teaser trailer for their first computer animated princess movie. The movie was formerly called Rapunzel, but after The Princess and the Frog's disappointing box office, Disney changed the title to Tangled. And as you can see from this trailer, they've put the focus not on Rapunzel herself, but the dashing thief Flynn Rider. These changes are all to get more boys interested in seeing the film. The question is though, is it smart for Disney to deviate so strongly from its classic fairy tale formula? After all, Disney's Princess line makes $4 billion in sales each year. As for why The Princess and the Frog didn't resonate with that same audience, it might have less to do with a female lead who's hand-drawn, and more with that female lead spending most of her time as a frog. Girls aren't big on frogs. However, on the other hand, the biggest grossing 2D animated films of all time are The Lion King and Aladdin, both of which don't focus on a princess. In addition, 2D animated films simply can't hold a candle to the box office power of computer animated films. So while there's a very vocal fan base for 2D animation, that same fan base needs to do a better job of putting their money where their mouth is if they want to see the traditional medium continue. Because right now, a new Winnie the Pooh movie set for July 2011 is the only 2D animated film in the works at Disney. Therefore, while we can't argue with the business sense that Tangled needs to be computer animated, is it a good idea for Disney to take a page from DreamWorks Animation's Book of Sass? Should Disney protect its trademark style, or is that style simply out of date? Write your thoughts down below, and if you plan to see Tangled in theaters. Speaking of sass, the Muppets were touting it way before DreamWorks. And after a 12-year hiatus, they'll be returning to the silver screen on December 25th, 2011. But while the Muppets are entertainment icons, they've never really shined at the box office. Their biggest grossing film was their first, The Muppet Movie, back in 1979 with $65 million. Afterwards, they hovered in the low 30s, high 20s, with their final film, Muppets in Space, pulling in a disappointing $16.6 million in 1999. But to hedge its bets, Disney has enlisted Jason Segel, who is not only co-writing this new Muppet movie, but will also be co-starring along with Kerman and company. And a new Muppet will even be introduced. But if 2D animation is a tough sell these days, imagine how hard it will be for puppets. Not to mention, Alvin and the Chipmunks 3D is scheduled to come out the weekend beforehand. You don't want to take on no CGI chipmunks, man. Especially if you are a witty puppet whose bread and butter is nostalgia. A few weeks ago, I talked about how it was weird that Disney would cast a non-Persian actor to play the Prince of Persia. Some of you agreed with me, and some of you argued it was just fantasy and not a big deal. Well, this week it was announced that Angelina Jolie is angling to play Cleopatra in a movie based on the new biography Cleopatra, A Life by Stacey Schiff. Now, I know that Cleopatra's father was a descendant of one of Alexander the Great's generals, but I'm still pretty sure she looked a little more Egyptian than Jolie does. Has Jolie learned nothing from the public disdain when she crimped her hair to play the multi-ethnic Marianne Pearl? Also, Cleopatra rose to power at the age of 18, while Jolie, at 35, is closer in age to when Cleopatra committed suicide at 39. Does Hollywood have an obligation to portray historical figures accurately, and do you care if they do? Furthermore, what do you think of the irony that Prince of Persia was whitewashed for the sake of American audiences, only to gross far more money internationally? It's a delicate subject, but one that Hollywood and audiences are going to need to address as movies become more and more global. I hope Jaden Smith has a pretty awesome Father's Day gift picked out for his dad because his dad gave him a number one movie this weekend. And not just any old number one movie, but one that crushed the competition. The Karate Kid opened with an impressive $56 million, made even sweeter by the fact the film cost just $40 million to make. This debut was right in line with Papa Smith's best debuts, impressive for a baby Smith who's just getting off the ground. And Will Smith, who produced The Karate Kid, not only does something nice for his son, but joins Brad Pitt and Leonardo DiCaprio as big movie stars who are producing successful films in which they do not star. And this is also pretty good for Jackie Chan, who seems to have found a new hit franchise to replace the Rush Hour movies. 
Word of mouth on the Karate Kid is fabulous, so it will be interesting to see how it fares next weekend when it steps into the ring opposite Toy Story 3. As for the A-Team, it turns out they were Plan B as they took the number two spot with $26 million. Their movie cost $110 million to make. Yikes. And while 26 ain't bad, it's still below the debuts of other recent male-centric films Robin Hood and Prince of Persia. The upcoming one-two punch of Jonah Hex and Night and Day isn't going to help much either. But as with Karate Kid, word of mouth on the A-Team is solid, so these Mavericks could still pull a fast one yet. As for the rest of the box office, it was pretty dismal. With the exception of Shrek Forever After, everybody else was dropping by 40% and more, with the real loser being Splice, which dropped by 61%. But still, the strength of the Karate Kid and the A-Team boosted the box office by 10% from the same frame last year, and Hollywood hopes the uptick will continue. But with Toy Story 3 opening next weekend, I think that's a pretty safe bet. And that's this week's Movie Math. As always, thanks for watching. I'm Grace Randolph, and we just did some movie math. Subscribe, comment, rate.